<clears throat> so kind of get into our Devo really quick. It'll be really short since I already kind of talked a lot. Um, oh, Carson, I need my hand. Um, <clears throat> but I kind of wanted to talk about some of the things that have been kind of going on recently in our country. I know it's really kind of hard stuff to kind of think about and talk about, and we kind of live in somewhat of a almost its own little bubble here in West Texas. You know, we don't, we still are not, we're not um, numb to these things, but we just don't see it nearly as much as other heavily populated places do and just other places of the country. Um, <clears throat> and for anybody who's ever traveled around the country, you, or around our country, you know that places like uh, other states and some of that are like, literally like a different country almost in a sense, because it's just the way how we interact with each other and how we talk and stuff like that is different. So, <clears throat> but I'm gonna try and like tactfully deal with this because I don't want to kind of, I don't want this to be politically motivated or anything like that. I just really want us to kind of, the less I'm gonna kind of give, I want us to think about it um, through the lens of, of Jesus and how should we interact and how how and how can we deal with this kind of stuff and um, and so hopefully I do it justice and um, treat everything right and I think that um, you know there's a lot of hard stuff that's going on right now and from the COVID to all the riots and stuff that's going on so I just pray you know I just want to <clears throat> be able to shed some light I think and to kind of help guide us all on this because it's something that I have to remind myself every day. Um, me and Caitlin were kind of talking about it the other day, the stuff that's kind of going on, and like we're, we were kind of nervous, and I started to get frustrated myself, and I kind of had to realize that I needed to take a step back and to really kind of sit down and think about what's going on and what, how I need to think about it. Um, but. <clears throat> but the question I want to ask you right now. And I want you to think about is who are you, you know, or who am I? <clears throat> you know, when I think to myself of who I am, I think of a lot of different things. It could be names, it could be titles, it could be whatever. It could be I, I'm TJ, I'm Thomas James Bruins. Um, Carson, I would say, who are you? And you probably say Goo Goo Gaga, but it's that's fine. <laughs> um, <clears throat> but something that I really would like for you to think about is who are you? Okay, a lot of us would have, you know. Our names and titles, you know, our name, I'm a Christian, I'm a construction worker, I'm a lawyer, I'm a mother, a father, a human being, whatever it is, okay? <clears throat> and a lot of times we think about, you know, um, we have to kind of remind ourselves, there's, there's a lot of people out there who are not exactly, you know, the same as us um, <clears throat> in a hundred different ways, whether it's race, color, political beliefs, whatever it is. Uh, but they're also people, and we have to remind ourselves too that they're also, you know, I think something that we have to, we always kind of come down to is who am I? And we say, I'm a child of God. Um, <clears throat> and I think that's something that we have to kind of remind ourselves pretty often. Um, we, you know, think about your son or your daughter or your brother or your cousin, you think about who they are. And you think about the person who you work with, your coworker, who are they? What's their name? Who, who are they and what do they do? Um, <clears throat> and then you think about the guy that dropped you off the other day because he was just a nice guy. Or <clears throat> you think about the guy who is, you be driving down the road and you'd be like, who is that guy walking on the, on the highway? Or you go to Walmart or whoever, or wherever you're going to the store and you say, who, you kind of think to your person so, sometimes like, who is that person? <clears throat> I think we have to remind ourselves that, of course they're different, you may not know their name. <clears throat> we know who they are. Um, <clears throat> And I think a lot of times we have to ask ourselves, um, who is your neighbor? You know, we kind of look into, we're going to go into, if you want to get your Bible out, we're not going to kind of read from it, but we're going to kind of just talk about it really quick. Um, <clears throat> but um, we're going to go into Luke chapter 10, uh, verses 25 through 37. And if you know what that is, that's the Good Samaritan. And I think it's, you know, as much as it is a, you know, cliche story sometimes, um, Especially in this situation, there's a lot of truth and a lot of power behind it. And so I encourage you to sit back and read it and probably take some time to read it. And there's a couple other stories I'm going to kind of bring up. And I would like to um, uh, <clears throat> encourage you to really kind of focus and pray about these stories. And see how other people dealt in these, in these situations. And especially Jesus. Um, but and, you know, in the Good Samaritan story, we got the, the, the person, the Jew, who gets beat up. Gets his stuff taken, gets thrown down, he's left on the side of the road. And then he has multiple people come up to him and they kind of just pass him by and they're like, ooh, look at that guy. You know, they probably don't think to themselves, who is that person? 
they probably don't think to themselves that person is someone who matters or who cares. Um, they just think, oh, poor sorry soul, that he got knocked out and got his stuff taken away. <clears throat> and then we have this person, you know, we've all heard this story a hundred, probably close to a thousand times it seems like, that you have this person who's a Samaritan who comes up, lifts him up, gets him fixed and dusts the robe, or dust, gets the dirt off his robes and cleans him up and gets him fixed up. Then takes him into a, a, an inn and gets him a room <clears throat> and gets him cleaned up and gets him set up and gives him some stuff, you know, <clears throat> In, we look into the before context of the story we have this guy who is when Jesus is preaching we have this guy who is considered a big time religious uh, expert is what some translations say and <clears throat> he's like kind of, it seems like he's trying to trip up Jesus and probably ask him a question that he may not be able to answer or he may he's looking for some way to, to trip him up and kind of make a fool of him in front of everybody almost I don't know exactly how he would do that and we kind of live in foresight now, or we kind of look back and like, well, there's no way he could have done that. But back then, he thought he could. And he asked him, what is the greatest command? And then the guy uh, goes to say, you know, I am, <clears throat> or what is the biggest uh, law above all? And then he goes, what is the greatest command? You know, love God with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength. And he says, love your, love your neighbor as, your, as thyself, or as yourself. <clears throat> and then he goes to tell the story of the Good Samaritan. And then we see this, he kind of really purposely uses Jewish and Samaritans as for a huge purpose of this, of this story. <clears throat> and I think it kind of fits in with a lot of what we're dealing with now. Um, we know, if you know that in the, in the past, and if you know kind of the context situation, you know, that sometimes people, these, the Jewish, have been kind of been given the right of a lot of things. And we got the Samaritans who... <clears throat> In some ways, they're kind of a little bit of a half-breed, almost. And they're kind of, like, seem to be completely less than every other Jewish person. Um, <clears throat> so you got this guy who's a Jewish person, and he's in this hole, and he's getting beat up or whatever. And then you got the Samaritan that comes along, who is someone who is, he gives himself up, and he lifts up this person helps him. Um, <clears throat> and I think and then after the story, we see this, and we, he asks, you know, okay... Um, so who is your neighbor? And, he, and then Jesus says, the, or he, Jesus asks the person, so who is your neighbor? And the guy goes, the one who shows mercy. And he's talking about the Samaritan who gave mercy to this Jewish person who probably, he's probably gone around in his life and he's probably been made fun of or <clears throat> laughed at or, made, or hurt or something like that but just because he's a Samaritan. And the Samaritans and the Jewish people did not get along in any way. And there's a lot of things that are kind of going on in our world right now that are almost very similar to this situation. I think, um, <clears throat> you know, whenever he says that to that person, who, or um, when, he, when he, the guy asks, you know, um, uh, <clears throat> the one who shows no mercy, um, and then you have, then Jesus says, exactly, now go and do the same something really powerful behind those words he's telling this guy everybody is your neighbor you should be the one that is showing mercy to everybody that everybody is your neighbor and that you can talk to them and help them in a lot of different ways and not let them down just because of who they are or where they're from or <clears throat> their color of their skin or their political beliefs or what sports team they love because there are people out there who are like that and they're crazy <clears throat> but you know a really good I don't know if you've seen the, the Mr. Rogers movie or documentary that came out um, <clears throat> and you know he's really not in my time at all I didn't know who Mr. Rogers was until a couple years ago I know right <laughs> um, <clears throat> I know I just had a birthday so I am kind of old but not that old for you people out there who, who watch this stuff just kidding <laughs> <clears throat> but Mr. Rogers Fred Rogers and one of his biggest quotes, I think, is there's a lot of power behind this quote. He goes, one of the biggest evils, like one of the greatest evils that anyone can do is to make someone think that they are less than what who, they treat them less than what they are. <clears throat> Mr. Rogers had a huge motivation and desire to make kids and help them understand that they matter, and that their feelings are real, and that they matter as much as any, as, as any other adult. And if you know Mr. Rogers, if you've seen some of his stuff, he definitely didn't let color or anything else get in that way. 
He wanted everybody to know that they are loved, that they're cared for, and that they matter. <clears throat> I think what Mr. Rogers is doing in, in his stuff and his mission was a lot of kind of what Jesus was kind of ex how, helping us to do. Now, there's so many other stories in the Bible that have um, the same kind of situation that's going on of two different kinds of people that aren't getting along that shouldn't get along but there's a true story there that's being told about god's love for matter no matter who you are the another story is is the story of jonah you know the story of jonah where jonah is supposed to go and god tells him to go preach to these people in nineveh and he's like no way he kind of says okay maybe kind of kind of lies a little bit whatever i don't know what that conversation actually exactly went like but he goes he's going to go to nineveh and he's like you know what i'm going to go somewhere else he goes to Tarshish, and if you look at the map, it is like completely on the other side of where he's supposed to go. It is like, I'm going to get as far away as I can. And the reason why he's trying to get away is because Nineveh is full of people who are sinners, and they kind of didn't really mesh well together at all. Kind of the same situation as the Jewish, as the Jews and the Samaritans. And by the end of the story, we, we find out that he goes and finally preaches to them, and he goes to... Um, <clears throat> He kind of complains to God a little bit. He's like, I can't believe you made me do that. Like, I know that you're loving. I know that you're caring. But I just don't see why I should be, have to do this. And then he's almost sitting on a ledge from the city to where everybody in Nineveh has turned to follow God. And then he's kind of like pouting and really angry and like really, you know, God made me do something. I don't want to do that. <clears throat> and then he kind of gives this little analogy, this story about how this plant this thing that that has given him shade where he's sitting where he's he's all heated up and he's sitting there and he gives him shade and at the end he kind of talks about how you feel sorry for that plant because it withers and dies and stuff like that um <clears throat> but you had nothing to do with it but at the end how can i not feel sorry for the people of nineveh just because they're different you know this is an old testament story this is before jesus got there but there's different people out there that deserve to be loved and cared for and then we have the story of the good Samar or the Samaritan woman, which is another, you know, if you ask anybody, any Bible professor or anybody out there that you've probably heard a hundred thousand different things that you could hear from this story about what Jesus' mission is. And <clears throat> this is a huge foundational story for a lot of people. And there's so many interpretations of everything of this story, and there's it's a decent sized story. Um, but to kind of recap, Jesus, he's sitting and he's preaching. And then we start to find out that the Jewish people are starting to try and make a, uh, they're like trying to, the Jewish religious leaders are actually trying to like, almost like keep count of who's baptizing the most people. And once Jesus kind of gets word of this, it says that he abruptly gets up and he goes, basically he's going to make a trip to Galilee. And then he's gonna, but he's gonna go through Samaria, which is kind of a little bit out of the way, a little bit, not not exactly, but he's not exactly going the straightest route. And so um, we see a story where Jesus goes across and he goes to this, this uh, I think this name of the city is Tychus, I believe, um, and he goes there, and this is where Jacob's well is. And remember, Jeff kind of talked about Jacob's well, and this is kind of you know where, where they kind of think about where they found it and all kind of stuff, and. Um, <clears throat> He's talking to this woman, and where he's sitting at that, it's like he knows something is going on. He's got a plan. Of course he does. He goes to the well, and he's sitting there, and he's taking, uh, he's just sitting there waiting. And this woman walks up. He's doing it in the afternoon, which is probably sometimes some people kind of believe that he purposely went there at that time to get the people who were probably not going to be, you know, look like want to be around people don't want to be around them and we soon find out that this woman was a somewhat of a prostitute or adulteress and went around and did things she wasn't supposed to do um <clears throat> but he went in the afternoon because people would typically go in the morning to get their water and whenever it's nice and cool but when they go in the afternoon it's all hot and it's just a long walk and so some people think he purposely went there at that time to show god's message in this way so <clears throat> we see this woman She's like, Jesus is like, hey, can you, can you get me a drink of water? And he's like, this woman is like, what? Why are you talking to me, this Jewish man? First of all, there's something there too. And then there's this Jewish man talking to this Samaritan woman. <clears throat> and the story goes on, it goes on a lot longer. I'm not going to, I'll be here for an hour if I try to talk about every single 
thing, you know, there's a lot there that is being told. There's a whole buffet of spiritual, you know, wellness and strength and foundation and growing in this passage, in this story. But we see that Jesus is talking to this woman who's a Samaritan woman. And Jesus is a Jew. And he's talking to this woman. And one of his disciples walk up and they're like, Who? Why are you talking to her? And she kind of gets scared and runs off. <clears throat> it's like it's like almost like God is trying to tell us something in all these stories, and Jesus especially, that no matter who you t who, who as long as they're a human being, and they are they have potential to be a great person and be a potential to be a great child of God. We should treat everybody that way. We treat everybody with mercy and with love. A lot of times um, <clears throat> we kind of get in the trap of you know. It's about trying to baptize people and get them ready and all that kind of stuff. And, and you know, we kind of get almost used to who we talk to and talk to other people. And I really encourage you to think about these stories and think about how Jesus dealt with, you know, talking to people who weren't exactly he wouldn't fit in with. I mean, that's like part of his 100% part of his mission is to bring the lost. And these people are lost. Now, <clears throat> the people out there... All this stuff that Jesus was doing, what God was doing, was all motivated. And it was all motivated by his love. By his love for these people. <clears throat> and his compassion. You know, that's something that Jesus shows a lot of. Is his compassion for people that don't exactly fit in. And we know that when Jesus' compassion works, and when it, when it pours out, people move. People do things. People do amazing things. So I encourage you to, to soften your heart to these situations that are going on everywhere. And it doesn't just have to be with people that are going off in, across the country. The people around you who irk you the wrong way when you're at work. Or the people who at Walmart, when that person cuts you off with their golf, with their shopping cart and you really want to say something. <clears throat> and you have to kind of catch yourself. Now, I, these are all like little things and there's much bigger things going on out there right now. And there's much bigger issues that we're dealing with in our country that are about, you know, whether it's about race or about your police officer or whether you're a fireman or whatever it is or whether you're a chef. <clears throat> it doesn't matter. Just because we are different doesn't mean that we're all separate. It doesn't mean that we are all in different places in our spiritual lives. <clears throat> so I encourage you to really kind of think about these stories and go into how um, Jesus said, was talking to these people and how he put himself in specific situations to show that no matter who you are, you can you, you can be a child of God. <clears throat> and I encourage you to think about um, to just pray about these stories and to, to encourage and other people to, to be compassionate and loving for others, no matter who they are, no matter what their political beliefs are, anything like that. Um, <clears throat> there's so much in the Bible that points towards these things. And I really, you know, and I'm really just scratching the surface. You know, there's a lot of people out there who can do a lot better than me. I just really, um, this has kind of been on my heart, and I try not to get all, you know, I try and stay off Facebook and stuff like that when it comes to, you know, political things and or just really just stuff like this in general. But I, I mean, this has really got me re recently. I've been thinking about it a lot, and and I and I think that everybody should. I think everybody should look, look, look at this through the lens of Jesus Christ and how his love and compassion, what he would have done in this situation. <clears throat> you know, I, I, we love you guys and we, um, hopefully I didn't, you know, um, step on his toes or anybody's toes or anything like that. But I really do think that um, we have to approach everything right now with love and compassion the same way that Jesus did. Or, or try to. And if you struggle with it, you need to pray about it. You need to, I mean, I, I struggle with it every day because, you know, it hurts me to see how other people get hurt because of situations or because of how other people. And to don't treat people less than how they should be treated. Give people mercy. Be a, a follower of God, a follower of Jesus. So <clears throat> I encourage you to do some amazing things this, this week. And, and, you know, as we start to get back together, you know, some, uh, a big verse that always pops in my head when we think about going to church is something that I <clears throat> really have kind of is in Psalms 133.1. It says, Behold how good and pleasant it is for brothers to dwell together in unity. There's a lot of power right there too. You know, there's a lot of people out there who have believe in different things. 
And I, and I really would like for you to think about that verse too. Unity. That doesn't mean, you know, I like the Cowboys or I like the Steelers and some other people like the Cowboys. I'm not going to hold it against them. I'm a, I mean, I would like to think myself as a Republican and some people are Democrats. I, would, I don't want to hold that against them. <clears throat> some people believe in the other things that are going on right now and I don't want to hold that against them. So I encourage you to, to think about these, think about other people as people. Not just people who live in another country and they don't matter to me because they do matter. They matter to someone else. So they should matter to you. Before we kind of go, I, I would like to pray really quick. Um, hopefully I didn't go on too long, um, <clears throat> but I'd like to pray uh, for y'all and hopefully um, <clears throat> and then we'll kind of maybe Kate will be back and you can say bye to the baby. Oh, baby's over there actually. Okay. <clears throat> but <laughs> um, sadly, Ablin wasn't able to be a part of it, but maybe we'll send them a We'll save this video and we'll send it to them or something like that maybe and we'll kind of see how it goes. But um, <clears throat> let's pray really quick. God, we come before you right now. We, we thank you so much for the life that you give us. God, our, our country is in a really hard place right now. We're dealing with lots of hard things and things that are difficult to kind of understand and what to do. God, I just pray that you be with us and that you help encourage people um, <clears throat> to be more like your son and to ex be accepting and caring of no matter who they are or where they come from. God, we love you so much. God, we just pray that our that your love outflows or overflows from us and spreads to other people, God. And that we're able to approach all these situations with compassion and care because these people matter. And we don't want we want them to be treated as they should be treated, as I should be treated, as I feel like I should be treated. We don't want any man, woman, child, <clears throat> boy, girl, no matter who they are. Be treated less than what they should be treated and that is by with respect and with love and with care and with mercy god we love you so much I pray that you just strengthen us and help us navigate this crazy situation we're in we love you so much we pray this all in your son's name amen <clears throat> all right before we go i'm gonna I'll walk y'all around kind of camp for some of y'all who haven't seen if you want to stick around Hey, here's Luke. Say hi, Luke. <laughs> here's Carrie. Y'all know. I mean, y'all probably know them. I'm sure y'all met them before. And here's Carson. <laughs> but <clears throat> I'll take her. Okay. It's fine. But. Yeah, we're finished. We're gonna go outside really quick. Really fast. <clears throat> but we're out here at camp, kind of getting things ready. There's a lot of new things that kind of happening this year. Um, so, but be ready, campers. You get to see it. I'm excited to see y'all. Um, Carson is too. Maybe see y'all Sunday. She's chilling. She's like, look at that camera. <laughs> but we love y'all. Um, <clears throat> and be safe out there. Love y'all. Bye.